Okay, so we're going to carve a basic character. And when I say basic, I do mean basic. This is going to be possibly the easiest uh, little character to carve. Now I've got a block here which is about 35 mil square. It doesn't matter if your block is bigger or smaller, you can just scale, um, scale it up and down depending on what size you've got. And we're going to just measure down, as I say, so I've got 35 just under. I'm going to measure down to about 60, so that's not quite twice the width, but near enough. There again, this isn't this isn't uh, set in stone. You can make it longer or shorter if you want. And we're going to square this around. I'll just do this by. You can measure it, or you can do it freehand. We we'll just measure two sides, and then we'll just try and meet them up freehand. It's not going to be. Uh, doesn't really matter if it's an exact. Just square across, and we can there from there um, cut that line in. So just to basically do a stop cut. So we'll cut that, and we'll cut back towards that line just so we've got that definitive point there for where our character finishes or starts as it were. So we'll just do that on the corners and then we'll cut across. Now this character you can do, I've got a detail knife here which has got a slight point to the end but you could easily carve this with a roughing knife in fact, I'll move over to the roughing knife in a moment. Probably best to do this first bit with the roughing knife, but there's hopefully not so much that we're actually removing here that we need to worry too much. It's quite a hard piece of wood we've got here. But just go around and do the other corner. So we're basically doing a stop cut on the corners and the same really all the way along. And that just defines our start point for the character upwards. Now from here, we draw on what we're going to do. See if you can guess what it's going to be. So we're going to curve the top and then it's going to flare out slightly as it comes to the bottom. So that's the shape we're going to do, and we're going to mirror that on all sides. So what we need to do is to take off corners like so, all the way around. Don't really need to draw this on, but you can do if you want to. So we're rounding over the top all the way around. What we're looking for is to create the shape at the top to be basically almost like a half sphere. It doesn't have to be a perfect sphere, but we're looking for that sort of shape. So we're just going to keep working around. And this is a good one for beginners because it you can practice your push cuts and clearing material around and it also you're working across the grain as well at the top so it gives you a good feeling for the timber and the cutting process.
Now, I might shorten this block in a minute because it's, it's heading the heading the bench. Only it, I would normally be working more um, on my lap, but obviously to get it for the camera, I'm having to work at a slightly awkward position, but. work all the way around. So you're looking to round over the top there. Once you've started to get that we're going to start to work the sides up because remember this is tapering up from the bottom so we're going to push all the corners away. Paper. So we're tapering from the base all the way up to the top, all the way around. So when you start you can be quite aggressive with it and take off big chunks when you when you're starting to work all the way around then get it off all the way around then you need to sort of temper your cuts down a bit because we don't now we need to be a bit more in control and start getting some nice tapered shape but we should start having something like that Make sure it, you're not curving. So your taper, if you're cutting back here, down, make sure you're not coming up again. So you want to check the top and make sure the top is still tapering as well. So you've got an even taper all the way around. So starting to get that shape, so now we need to work over the top more and really round this over, get a nice rounding to the top. So you've got to make sure you've got all this material off. So we've got end grain here, all that's got to be carved away. There shouldn't be any cut material, saw cut material left. It should be all carved. Uh, 
just So with our top rounded over, we can start working on the base here now. So now we probably want to cut in from this side and, and start to separate our piece more. So we're going to do the same type of stop cut. Just so we can get an idea of the piece from the base. So work around all the corners. work the sides as well. Okay, so you can now see the character separated at least slightly. And we will do the, I'll show you a couple of variations on this next bit that we can do from basic to slightly less basic. As you can probably work out, this is going to be a ghost. So all we need is, I mean you could stop there, you could just cut that off flat. And we just need a couple of eyes on there, which we draw those on quickly. You could paint on. So if you want to stop there, here's your basic character. We'll paint white and paint some black eyes on there. Now if we want to go a step forwards, we can add a little bit more detail to the base. So rather than just a flat base, we can give it a sort of 
swoopy shape like so imagine you know a child dressing up at Halloween as a ghost with basically just a sheet over them so we're going to imagine that the base isn't completely flat and it's uh, sort of up, up and down like waves at the bottom there so again you don't have to be too picky about how this goes you can just draw on some lines and we can make some sort of flowy shapes so let's do that so we can follow our line and mark in and basically do our like a scoring a stab cut followed by scoring across This is where we need to undercut now because we need now to get underneath and remove, uh, do a stop cut back up to our point there. So we're going to cut across and start to remove this excess timber here. Now we are effectively cutting across the grain again so this will be quite hard work. So now we've got a sort of swoopy edge at the bottom there. So that's sort of step two as to making your carving, carving a little bit more detail to your carving. So again, you can stop there. You can then just, once you've painted, just saw off, saw your carving off from the block. Or we can go to the next step. So we've got a couple more steps we can do to make this a little bit more detailed. So we can now, well, this. 
rather than paint these on, these eyes on, we could carve these eyes in. So we could actually carve holes in. Now you could get a drill bit and drill some holes in there. Now you've got a nice circular eye shape. I think it would look better if we had sort of ovals rather than circles. Um, so we'll look at doing that. So we're going to have to do, obviously first of all you want to draw on your eyes here, however you want your eyes. So you know where you're going. And you can make them as big or as small as you like. So we've got our two sort of eye holes there. So we can carve those out. So we can carve the eye. Just follow that line. We're going to do a stab cut in and then score around. And we're going to do it at an angle. A slight angle. So we're not going straight down in, we're going at a slight angle. And we're going to score around. And I'm going to come from the other side and round. back in at the opposite angle and follow that line round and create a hollow so we can create now a hopefully you can see a groove in there for the eye so we'll come back this way and we'll do the same cut in. Now so what I've done here is rather than just create a hole we've actually built out, we've carved in from the sides um, and tapered from the centre so we've created a lump in the middle. Now you could just carve a hole and paint it black but what we've got in here now is a it's a sort of raised part in the middle so we can for extra detail if you wanted to rather than just paint the eye holes black you could then put paint a little eye in there as well so it actually looks like someone is looking out from the under the sheet you could do that with if you just carve it flat as well. Obviously, if you're just pa using paint to do that, and then it's you could do that. But it's quite good practice, quite nice, and quite good practice if you can do something like this. You, you probably do need a detail knife for this bit. You need a sharp point, but you could probably use a craft knife uh, or a scalpel if you haven't got a detail knife. Um, which you'd be able to probably pick up anywhere. So you do obviously need a something with a point to get in because it's quite small.
it needs a little bit of tidying up, but hopefully you can see in there now. Um, in here we've got, rather than just a hole, we've got this part here which is slightly raised up. So we've got the option now, we can just paint it black or we could put a little, you know, dot of white or an, actually paint an eye in there as well and give it a bit more character. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same with this one. This is where you do have to be a bit careful because obviously you've got to make sure they line up. And are roughly the same size. So now we've got our next stage, obviously again you can stop here, remove it from the base, paint it up, and you've got your character. We'll try one more thing to try and add a little bit more detail into it. So where we've got these swoopy lines at the bottom here, let's see if we can actually create what looks more like some um, folds in the material. So. Where we've got this lower point and higher point that's where the material would be curling round so we need to look at the lower point here and so we've got this this curve roughly like so and that means we want to sort of in there create something like the material is is set back so it's it's flowing out and that's set back in so we don't want to interfere with what's going on up here too much so we'll just do it down the bottom uh, so we will taper from here and we'll cut in at an angle this way and follow our line and sort of not dead straight we want to sort of curve it round a bit and then the same thing here I'm going to curve it round a bit cutting in at an angle So, and now we can just work the top there, start removing out this material. But we don't want a hard, hardened, defined line as such. We want to smooth it out so it's like a curve. So that's where it needs to taper in. This is difficult to do with a knife. Um, this is perhaps easier to do with some gouges because you can get a shape where you can actually create the, the the rounded bottom but it's it's good practice if we can if we can get this done then it'll be it will stand us in good stead for later so we're going to round over and round over the here So we can start to cut out a curve at the base here as well. So that's what we're looking for, just something like that, and we can repeat that two or three times around, wherever you feel it it will look good.
So you could do a, a sharper angle like that if you like. Make more. If you want it more uh, sort of more defined, less subtle, you can do a more of a sharper angle like so. And then we we'll just take that edge off. So then we've got a slightly more detailed ghosts now. So we've got these lines in. as many of those round as you want and then we can well probably it'd probably easier if we paint him while he's still attached on here and then we can remove from the block and uh, finish it off Okay, so we'll look at uh, the final bit of finishing. You might want to cut your carving from the block before we do this bit. I'm going to leave it on just for ease of holding it. Uh, but it's obviously a very simple character, so it should be a very simple paint job. I've got some um, water-based oils here. Now, you probably if you're starting off um, use acrylics they're easy to work with clean up easily and all that sort of thing uh, I actually use these water-based oils just because I find um, I can blend them a little bit easier than with acrylics but each their own they do take a while to dry though acrylics dry much quicker than, than these do but as I say use whatever you've got to hand you can e even use uh, watercolors and things like that just be aware that water does raise the grain slightly so um, keep that in mind. You could, because this is quite a nice creamy wood, you could just use a clear um, wax on here, It'd probably give quite a nice sort of finish, but we're going to highlight him a little bit and make it look like a bit more like a white sheet. But I'm not going to do just white, so I'm going to take my white colour here and I'm going to add a tiny um, a very very tiny amount of this yellow ochre here um, and hopefully, and I, when I say very tiny, I do mean very tiny amount because you don't need much just to offset the white um, just to give it a slightly sort of hopefully creamy look uh, rather than a sort of a harsh white so let's get that I'm going, to, I'm going to make it quite nice and uh, watery as well as I put it on so it's not going to be thick. I want a sort of wash, a wash coat really. Um, let's add a bit more water to that. Test it on a off cut first, just to see what it actually looks like. Because obviously, sometimes what you mix up in the in the pot doesn't quite look the same when you apply it to the wood. So, um, it's going to see how we go. Yeah, it's still quite quite white, I would say. We might go with a little bit, uh, a little bit more colour on there. Take a bit more white on it. Just to test it on there a little bit, so let's um, wipe that off and see. Yep, that's, I would say that's um, that's pretty good. 
So, as I say, if you just want to do flat white, that is fine. Um, brush here and, uh, so as I say all I want to do is really give it a wash coat I don't want to I don't want it to be thick at all So as you can see, I've still got the, the facets here, uh, I haven't sanded smooth. I like to show the sort of the fact that it is hand carved. And if you smoothed it off entirely with your abrasive, you wouldn't know whether it's wood or plastic or whatever. So each to their own. I do do... Um, I do smooth out my carving sometimes, but only, as I mentioned before, between a contrast, if I want to have a contrast between elements. So I might smooth out uh, a face, for example, and then leave a texture on clothing. Uh, so it sort of differentiates the two different things. So. I'm not against it entirely. I just like to use it to effect. But even uh, often when I carve as well, um, I still like to sort of, even when I sort of sand smooth on on you know, skin, um, I still like to leave just a hint where the, you can see the tool marks as well. So, um, you know, but again, that's just a preference. You can do whatever you want to do, and I won't judge you. So, that's it, just a simple wash. I'll let that soak in, and then when it's, uh, say, acrylics would go off quite quickly, um, this will probably take a few hours to soak in nicely, and then I'll get a, a clean cloth and just wipe it over, and it will remove some of the uh, excess which will allow it to dry a bit quicker and it will leave the grain showing through a bit more so it will be more like a wash coat then um, but just make sure everything's coated nicely So there you have it, there's the finished character removed from the block and I've put a little bit of wax on top of the paintwork just to help seal it but there we have it, there's the finished ghost.